Hey guys, Tommy here. In this video, I'm doing my top three cryptocurrency picks. Uh, this is not investment advice, it's just my perspective. Um, so do whatever you guys wanna do and make your own decisions. I wanted to spend more time to make this video. Honestly, I wanted to make it as good as possible, but I realized I probably should have also released this two weeks ago as it is. So I'm starting to realize I'm a bit of a perfectionist on that and there's gotta be a balance on quality and getting it out there. So anyway, here we go. So first thing I'm showing you guys here are my top three picks of cryptocurrency. I, I posted this on Twitter uh, on December 26th, as you can see there, and I actually posted this exactly for the reason I wanted to make the video since then, but uh, I didn't have time to do it. So, uh, but I put that there to show you guys those those were my top three picks uh, there at the time, and they still are. Uh, but but that time I knew the prices were good. So just to show you guys here, you can see there. Uh, we have Monero, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and the runner-up is Dogecoin. So at the time of posting this, Monero was right around $10. Ethereum was around $720. Bitcoin was about $910. And Dogecoin was about $232 per million. And of course, again, Monero is my number one pick. Ethereum is my number two pick. Bitcoin is my number three pick. And the runner-up is Dogecoin. Uh, so my picks were quite good. Uh, we could take a look and see how the prices are doing now. And so you can see here, uh, Monero is now at $19. So uh, almost doubled in price there. Uh, Ethereum has increased quite a bit there too, from around $7 to 1175 And Bitcoin is also up uh, about 20 to 30% or so. And then Dogecoin, is doing all right, hasn't really done much, but I'll talk about that a little more here as we go too. So let's take a look at why these are my picks. So first we'll talk about Monero. And uh, Monero is the most anonymous cryptocurrency. Uh, and of course, people used to think Bitcoin was anonymous, uh, but as we all know now, all Bitcoin transactions are actually visible on the blockchain. So in regard to anonymity, uh, Monero is the best anonymous cryptocurrency, no other uh, anonymous cryptocurrency comes close. And we're talking about functionally anonymous, like there's other cryptocurrencies that might use CoinJoin or there's Bitcoin mixing protocols that do the same thing, but those have a lot of limits on how long it takes, how much you can send. So Monero just does it really well. And it's also past the test of time, something I think is really important. Uh, also to boot, the community is strong in size. Uh, you can see here on the Reddit metrics, it's growing very well. It's one of the biggest communities here actually for cryptocurrencies and it's growing really well. The developers are actually, are also very active in the space. Uh, so that looks good too. Uh, as far as uh, on Monero, I think it will have a big role as people want to keep their finances private. One thing on Monero is you can't look up to see so how much someone has. Like mo pretty much most other cryptocurrencies, you can look at the blockchain and see how much people have. Uh, Monero, you cannot. Uh, of course, the transactions are also obfuscated. Uh, there's a lot of use just right out of the box. Monero also had the graphical user interface just released too recently, which is awesome. I made a video on that, how to get that. I'll put that in the link if you guys want to see how to get that. Uh, but yeah, I would say also, you know, we're always looking for the killer apps upcoming in cryptocurrency. And I'd say the privacy of money is one of the most potent current killer applications out there. Uh, you know, China right now has these currency controls. If you're not aware, you can't wire more than $50,000 a year out of China. And of course, there's ways they try to work around this and use Bitcoin. And I've heard since the Chinese government is now starting to pay attention to what Bitcoin is doing. Well, with Monero, you can circumvent that and they really can't see what you're doing. So it's really powerful. Uh, there's more uses than that for Monero, but we'll just leave it here for now. But it is certainly my number one pick. I think a lot of people are going to value privacy and money, and that's going to have a place in currency going forward. So next is Ethereum, and I just made a video on Ethereum's value. I'll put a link to that below. But basically, as I said in the video, um, years ago, I was enthralled by the idea of smart contracts, especially those that could lead us to decentralized exchanges. Um, and I just feel like I have to mention this. Uh, some people in the cryptocurrency community just don't, just don't seem to get this, but it's becoming clear to me that some people have their identity just attached to Bitcoin and nothing else. Uh, you know, Bitcoin maximalists, I'm sure you've heard the word. 
basically they think it's Bitcoin or nothing. Personally, I think this is incorrect, and I guess that might be because I'm not attached to uh, cryptocurrency. I, I want to see the space evolve. Once again, I'm looking for I'm looking for the technology to evolve. So I appreciate the steps that are taking us there. Uh, but anyhow, so so uh, but you know that's the beauty of it too. You know, everyone has just like you can make your own life decisions. You can make your own decisions what you want to do with cryptocurrency, which ones you like. So that's the beauty of it. Do whatever you like in that. Uh, and it's your results on which ones grow and which ones don't. So that being said, uh, on Ethereum, I think one of the biggest values of cryptocurrency as a whole is a f the free expression of money. So just to elaborate on that, the internet made us a lot more free, but money has still been tied down. I see cryptocurrency as making money more free. Not free as in costing nothing, but free as in freedom. I think it's a very powerful thing, very good for humanity. Uh, programmable cryptocurrency will let us do this far better than Bitcoin can today with this kind of freedom of money. As I mentioned before, one of the biggest things I look forward to is a decentralized stock exchange. Decentralized stock exchanges could perhaps one day have more power and more volume than the centralized stock exchanges that occur today. I'm looking far ahead here, you know, in the space of up to 10 years ahead or more or sometime in that range. But this is extremely powerful. It gives a lot of power to investors, traders, and I think there'll be a lot more of us who do that when we have more control of our money. It's a great thing. So why am I interested in this? Because I feel like it reflects the true nature of money. And I love that. I, I study big money related subjects quite a bit on my own. I think it's important to realize that for any person who's using money, money is energy. Where you put your money, you empower. And so when you have more control over that, you'll have more power. You'll have more power to empower the things that you support. And you can really choose what you want to give your energy to. Understand that today you have to use the currencies that are given to you, like the dollar or euro. You have no choice and you may not support everything those currencies are doing. So in the future, perhaps you can choose to work with currencies that really support the endeavors that you like. This is less power for governments and more power for the people. I think this is something really healthy for the human race. This is a really important point in this, by the way, guys. Uh, I don't think Bitcoin has the power to do this alone. I think we need programmable cryptocurrency to really facilitate this level of freedom. I think programmable cryptocurrency will be able to do this. And it should have ma power that's magnitudes more than Bitcoin in expressing this freedom of money. So... That being said, there's a handful of other cryptocurrencies seeking to join this realm of programmable cryptocurrency. As of now, no one is even close to Bitcoin, or excuse me, no one's close to Ethereum. Uh, so I would say in this way, Ethereum is actually like the Bitcoin of programmable cryptocurrency. You know how Bitcoin was first and, uh, and whatnot. Ethereum is kind of like that for programmable cryptocurrency. We might have Ethereum maximalist one day too, so... We'll see about that. We have to we have to realize though that competition is on the horizon. Although Ethereum is leading the way in programmable cryptocurrency, I'm sure in the future there, there's going to be some strong competitors. We haven't seen any yet. Right now, there's just some clones. We have to see uh, what actually comes out, comes out. But right now, uh, Ethereum is leading the way. No other competitors really uh, has much innovation. At least that's that's been released and certainly has not passed the test of time yet. So just to add to that too, I should mention I really like the Ethereum team. Um, it's a good group of people. They, they seem like, or I, I can tell, they're very well-natured people. Uh, they're very smart and they're also future conscious. Uh, it's good to see this kind of, it's good to see them focusing on these things. One, one thing they're implementing is sharding. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically a master chain and then child chains below it. So for example, uh, if we're talking about scaling cryptocurrency on a, a blockchain to a really big level, uh, imagine that you have a master chain and then a company has perhaps hundreds or thousands of child chains that are just full of data. And that data is, uh, you know, they'll, they'll fill up a chain with perhaps 100 terabytes of data or more. And the transactions in the child chain will be extremely cheap to do. Those, those uh, blocks or the whole chains may become really full and they may just push it aside and go on to a new chain. This could happen as frequently as even every day that they move on. And those old chains could be validated by just one or two or a handful 
of computers or servers. So that's kind of the direction of the future that I see in this. Of course, uh, we have to see how it plays out, but that's I'm envisioning something like that. So in closing, I would just say, of course, also to keep in mind, programmable cryptocurrency can also integrate anonymous uh, currency type of applications within it. But Monero is leading the way with a user base and has a really strong lead there. And plus, it hasn't been developed in Ethereum or any other programmable cryptocurrency yet. So we'll see how the anonymous currency applications fit in this realm. But I just want to say in closing, don't underestimate the power of Ethereum uh, or programmable cryptocurrency. You know, consider the future in that. And my third pick here is Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a safe bet in the cryptocurrency world. It's the oldest, it's the steadiest, has huge brand name recognition and is growing steadily as well. It's an obvious pick. Uh, it doesn't have the potential for gain like these smaller cryptocurrencies do like Monero, which is why it's my third pick. But it's a safe bet and it's a good introduction to cryptocurrency too. Uh, my biggest concern with Bitcoin is the block size limit. Uh, this can really hinder its growth or cause a lot of damage to it. So it's being worked on. We'll see how that all pans out. And finally, my runner up is Dogecoin. Uh, yes, Dogecoin. And uh, just hang in there and I'll explain why. So when I first heard of Dogecoin in December 2013, I was skeptical too. But I did my research and uh, really got to know the community. And I'll mention too, firstly, the community is super friendly, uh, which I find valuable and I'm sure other people would too. But in terms of the actual, uh, our, some of the investment value there, what really stood out to me is how big the community was. It, it's a, it was a big community and it still is quite big. For many, many people haven't explored this or seen this. So I'll show you, take a look at this graph here. Look at the number of transactions that are occurring here in Dogecoin, even all the way out in April of 2015, you can see it's quite a big competitor to Bitcoin. The, the next competitor after Dogecoin was Litecoin. You can see the transactions for Dogecoin are even significantly higher than Litecoins. Uh, yet here, take a look at the, the market cap. The market cap was way lower than Bitcoins. So I saw a lot of potential value there. Uh, it could have appreciated very greatly if a whale ever recognized that. Unfortunately, uh, it never really was recognized for that. And over time, you can see since that point of April 2015, the transactions and user base just dwindled off. So at this point, I feel like a lot of the Dogecoin community has migrated to other communities. A lot of them, I suspect, in Ethereum. Uh, nonetheless, even though the transactions and user base is down, I don't underestimate Dogecoin. Uh, it's my runner up. So uh, lots of love. For you guys out there a very loving community and i think that's you know if we take a big step back here you know that's the whole purpose of life in my opinion is to feel good good vibes and and that kind of stuff and the dogecoin community really embodies that so that's it for the video guys hope you guys liked it if you do give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet be sure to subscribe uh, i wish you guys the best and i'll see you on the next one